Today we're going to run through the kind of uh, initial thoughts on, on, on Fantasy Premier League for the 21-22 season. Um, it's quite a big season in, in the sense that I think we have a lot of clubs uh, coming back from previous years in terms of uh, Norwich and Watford. And, you know, we have a, a new kind of name in, in Brentford that I think has crept into a lot of people's minds because in recent years the championship teams, I think, have stepped up in, in terms of quality and a lot of those kind of picks become very interesting, you know, when we're looking at teams, uh, especially at the start of the season. And I think on on the back of that, we still have a lot of transfers to go. So these are very, very uh, initial thoughts. Um, there's also potential here, you know, when you're picking your team now to en en envision um, a possibility of, you know, transfers kind of impacting how your team kind of looks. Uh, and for example, Ben White is a good example of that. But the video today will actually be looking at, you know, defenders, uh, keepers, uh, and forwards and midfielders, you know, uh, in, just in terms of pricing and, and anything that, that catches my eye, really. So I'm going to start with keepers today and kind of look at, you know, set and forget options and also perhaps just, um, you know, what, what I feel about price points as well. Uh, I think this year, what makes sense is if you want to try and cut down on your budget as much as possible is to kind of have Sanchez for Brighton and, and let him be your set and forget with Foster if you want to go for the absolute budget option. However, of course, I still think Martinez uh, is a good option at 5.5. It sounds ridiculous, but I think Aston Villa um, have a solid defense. Uh, they haven't necessarily improved on it. They brought Ashley Young in, so that could be a little bit of a game changer in that sense. But Nothing crazy. I think they, they had, had a solid defense last season and, and really struggled, I think, more so when Grealish was out injured. And now they've actually improved, I think, on their team with Emi Buendia. Now, one could make the argument that Aston Villa could now potentially have more possession of the ball if they managed to retain Grealish in the squad. And that could affect maybe how many shots Martinez was facing because part of what gave Martinez a lot of points last season was the amount of shots he was facing. But in my opinion, I think he will still be a top keeper option for the year going forwards. I just uh, kind of envision that Sanchez will probably do well. Um, in terms of the premium options, I think between Ederson and Mendy, I think Ederson is the only one that makes sense. He sometimes has crazy games where he can have, you know, attacking output once or twice a season, and that can be, you know, quite massive in terms of points. And I do think this Man City team has, you know, a wonderful defense. So if you are kind of interested in keeping someone who doesn't get rotated for Man City, then, I mean, Ederson is your man. Uh, going down the kind of line, I think I don't really like the 5.0 options in terms of Patricio because he's subject to probably a transfer. Fabianski really struggles with keeping clean sheets with West Ham, in my opinion. I don't think they're shoring up their defense this year. The only upgrades, I think, have been really in terms of uh, attack and potentially they might be looking to get a striker, but you know, nothing has really changed uh, in terms of West Ham. Leno and Schmeichel, I think... Schmeichel could be interesting at five, you know, if you think uh, Leicester are probably due for more clean sheets. But I think it might make sense to look at him when maybe someone like James Justin joins back the team because I think he's one of the more solid players, you know, in that squad. But n nothing else really strikes out to me at this point. So uh, really, it's uh, the same options as last year with the addition of Sanchez, in my opinion. Uh, now, if we go into defenders, I think... What's interesting, of course, is I think the defenders are well-priced in terms of the premiums, uh, but there is a lot of potential in terms of the lower-priced options. And, and we'll go through the premiums first. Alexander-Arnold was the leading chance creator in the year. Uh, he, he is also walking into a year where he has to kind of fight for his place once again for the English World Cup team. And I think this is a great year for him once again to prove himself. He was the lead chance creator, as I mentioned. Uh, and I expect that to be the same. And I think... You know, even at 7.5, he's extremely worth his price. Now, Cresswell and Sufal are, of course, two of the other fullbacks who I think play for quite an offensive team uh, that actually get you most of their points for their offensive returns. Sufal is actually has better ha has better underlying statistics, but of course, Cresswell is in charge of more set pieces, in my opinion, than than Sufal, and that's what kind of is the difference maker. Now, I think Sufal at 5.0 is still underpriced, and in my opinion, I think Cresswell is probably due for a slightly worse season, given the fact that he is a somewhat more aged defender and Sufal is still about to kind of enter his prime, in my opinion. And, I mean, I, I think you can spend that 0 0.5 elsewhere, you know, while still keeping a West Ham player. I wouldn't recommend going for both. 
Uh, Wan Bissaka, of course, is an interesting option because I think if Man United are to add Sancho to the team, it would actually give him a lot more space, uh, you know, higher up in the field to actually provide attacking returns. And of course, many people are going to mention the fact that Shaw is the true creator in that side in terms of creating chances, but it's about quality chances too. And I think that's what Shaw has failed to kind of deliver and what, what kind of made his points last season rather low, I think, uh, respective to his price this year. And Juan Bissaka would probably, in my opinion, have a bit more space due to the threat that Sancho would provide on the right if he is to join United. And even if Juan Bissaka is a somewhat worse player than, than Shaw offensively, I think he can only grow and he's so young and so talented, in my opinion, that I think he's a good pick uh, for 5.5. Another 5.5 pick that I quite like, actually, would be Rudiger for Chelsea. Because I think uh, Rudiger, if we, let's say, sort, sort by uh, price right now, Rudiger makes a lot of sense because he's one of the more glued-on Chelsea defenders who also kind of plays um, at, at, uh, plays kind of very offensive passes, in my opinion. Sometimes he has probably one of the better deliveries of the three centre-backs. And on top of that, I think he's, of course, still a goal threat, you know. Um, now, of course, the fullbacks for Chelsea are going to be more offensive threats, but you really don't know. I think that they're probably going to keep the players in terms of Alonso, uh, and, you know, there's going to be rotation in the squad inevitably. I think Digne as well, to be fair, is also someone who could be interesting, given his fixtures early on in the season. And uh, I think Everton's defense is still, uh, fundamentally, a very good defense. Uh, Digne, of course, is one of the leading chance creators in the league as well. And you can see him even, for example, now when he's playing for France, that he is clearly one of the better fullbacks uh, in the world. And in my opinion, he is also another great 5.5 pick. Some people would actually look into Kanate to kind of uh, find their way into a Liverpool defence, but you really don't know if uh, he can immediately start. And on top of that, I think, you know, Van Dijk uh, is probably due for more attacking returns when he, when he comes back and, and if he looks fit. Uh, but I am tempted to kind of stave off of him for now and probably stick with someone like Alexander Arnold because he is a true premium pick, in my opinion. Uh, with City, we know there's still subject to, uh, you know, the players are subject to rotation and it's a tricky scenario there. I think perhaps Walker might uh, find his place in the squad to be more nailed on as the year goes on uh, because Pep did seem to kind of prefer Walker, you know, as we kind of end, uh, walked into the, the second half of the season last year. And, and perhaps Cancelo might be looking to move on given the fact that I think when you have two kind of world-class right-backs in your team, it's hard to kind of really keep both of them happy, in my opinion. Um, in terms of, let's say, Arsenal assets, I think, as I mentioned before, players moving on could be interesting. Ben White joining Arsenal would mean that you'd have a nailed-on Arsenal player at 4.5, and that's quite interesting to me. Um, there's also Chambers as well, if that, tra if that transfer um, doesn't happen. I know Chambers doesn't necessarily play in centre-back, but he does play in right-back, where... I think Bellerin is due to be moved on, and if they can't find a replacement option there, then Chambers is actually a very interesting pick. Tierney, of course, is a fantastic pick. He, he only really struggles, I think, due to just injury concerns. But, you know, when he's fit and when he's ready to play, I think he's a top-tier asset. The same thing with James Justin as well, who's not as injury-prone, but obviously suffered a very unfortunate injury. And I think when he comes back, he'll be interesting. But for now, in terms of your access into the Leicester defense, it's going to be probably F Fofana. I imagine he'll probably slot back into the side. And I think that's a wonderful way that you can also kind of balance off playing with Brighton and uh, Leicester as well. Um, their fixtures, I think, kind of work really well with each other in, in the early half of the season. And I think, of course, as I mentioned here, a lot of 4.5 picks make a lot of sense this year, and they're very good. Uh, team, uh, players from other teams I probably wouldn't look at, especially Wolves. I think Wolves is an interesting one. Bruno Lag is joining the team, and I don't think he's as defensive a manager as Nuno. And I think for that reason, it doesn't make sense to go for any Wolves players. And I wouldn't really touch any of the defenders from any other teams other than Ailing from Leeds. Ailing from Leeds is an interesting pick, in my opinion, because uh, Dallas has moved on from the defend uh, their position this year in FPL. And therefore, I think Ailing is one of those uh, fullbacks who gives you probably solid attacking returns. Now, there is a slight outside chance and that if Reese Williams is to go on loan uh, to another club, that he could be a good pick. But uh, I'm not going to talk about that potential now. I also don't like Tottenham for for many uh, reasons, similar to why I, I'm a little bit kind of wary of maybe going for someone like Digne as well. I mean, any situation where you don't have a manager, you know, before the season starts means that it's likely that with the lack of a, a good preseason as well, 
um, you know, that the manager's identity can't be stamped on and, and you'll see a little bit more like erratic results, I think. And, and that's not good for a defense. Anyways, moving on to the midfielders. I think midfielders have been a situation over the last few years where we've looked at, you know, two premium picks. And I think it makes more sense to have the full on premium picks than, than, than players in the kind of mid range, in my opinion. Uh, with the exception of someone like Sun last year, who obviously performed like an absolute madman. And um, I think the way prices are set this year is that forwards are the most overpriced players in, in the game. And therefore, it makes more sense to play some sort of 4-4-2 structure. Uh, I mean, a 5-back is per perhaps pushing it, in my opinion. Because um, we do expect, I think, most of the returns to once again just come back from the midfield. And for that reason, I, I like, you know, Salah and Fernandez once again. Fernandez didn't necessarily end the season particularly strongly with Man United, but I have full faith that he will kind of return to form. And with the possibility that Pogba will actually move on from the club, makes Fernandez an even better option to have, because I imagine he will be more ball dominant, as he will be the kind of leading creating force on the team um, in terms of someone who even drops deep at times. And uh, I think Sancho joining the team is, is very healthy in that sense. Uh, I think, you know, he's going to be set on pens, and I think, yeah, I mean, bring Sancho on as well, he can definitely get you pens. Um, it's not crazy to think that Fernandez will have another fantastic year. And Salah, as we know, is, I mean, uh, all you have to do is look at his history in FPL, so I don't think there's much need to talk about that. I think Salah is someone that you pretty much have to have at all times in your team, uh, with the exception to the time when he actually leaves for uh, national duty. Uh, for the African Cup of Nations. This year, I think there's a lot of great 6.5 picks. The only pick that I would kind of look above that price is um, between three players, in my opinion. I think we're talking about right now uh, Havertz, who I think really rose into form and is continuing that form even on an international stage right now with Germany. So I really like Havertz at that price. I think his position at Chelsea is rather set in terms of being one of the two key forwards in the team. Uh, provided that, you know, Tuchel actually stays within that system. And I think he is an absolutely quintessential player for them. Now, I think another great pick, of course, is going to be Grealish. Grealish is an interesting one where, of course, we know his talent, the amount of chances he creates. But there is another option in his team uh, in Emi Buendia. And I think you might want to pick either one of the two um, for your team. Now, of course, you could triple up on Aston Villa, but that's obviously a massive, massive gamble. Uh, I think they could be a dark horse this season. I think their team is rather stacked, I think, and very top-heavy. Um, so they could score a lot of goals. But fundamentally, I think you want to just pick one of the key chance creators in their team, uh, and, and that should be either Grealish or Emi Wendia. I think the third pick that's above 6.5 that you might want to consider at this stage right now is going to be Pepe. I think Pepe ended the season extremely strong, and I think Arteta is looking to you know, allow him to kind of play within the side and, and start consistently. Um, of course, he is also competing sometimes uh, positionally with Saka, but it really depends on how Arteta plans to fit all three of them uh, into the team in terms of Emil Smith-Rowe, Emil Smith in terms of Saka, in terms of Pepe. But I think Pepe has a strong potential to actually score a lot of goals if he carries on the, se uh, the form that he had at the end of the last year. And it's not just, you know... Uh, coming down to some sort of fluke or anything. We've seen Pepe perform in previous leagues, and I think it was more of a case of when he would either fulfill his potential and continue to show it. And I think he's, you know, beginning to do that. And, yeah, I think this could be a good year for Pepe for that reason. Hota, I think, is someone you consider only when the African Cup of Nations rolls around. I don't really like having a pick that's 7.5 mil. I mean, regardless of the amount of playtime that he had last year, um, when he sometimes plays and doesn't have returns one week and then has great returns the next. I think if you're going to go higher than 6.5 million, you want to have that player be a starter. And I think for that same reason, I think Gundogan is um, he's an interesting one, not in the sense that he does, doesn't have much play time, but I think he will drop uh, further deeper into the field if Man, you know, Man City actually uh, managed to kind of sign some more offensive assets, I think. Uh, depending on the team that I think Pep Guardiola plays, you'll probably see Gundogan drop further deep the Champions League final is a good indicator of that, where Gundogan drops a little bit deeper and, and, and doesn't have as much attacking involvement. So it really depends on who Man City kind of signed, uh, and then maybe we can, you know, talk about Gundogan in another day. But I think if we just skip through the kind of options uh, at a 7 pricing, I think Madison Barnes, well, I'll touch on that briefly. Uh, I think Leicester moved into kind of like um, 
a more consolidated dual striker formation near the end of the year. And that actually uh, was, I think, partially a symptom of the fact that Madison and Barnes were injured. But also, I think it actually was co- coincidental with, I think, a slight uptick in Leicester's form. And, and it, it might be the case that, you know, playing this double striker formation that the attacking midfielders get less chances. And I think it's always tricky with Madison and Barnes because I think either one of them are set to kind of get chances. I think when you're picking midfielders, you kind of want to pick someone who is, I think, fundamental to the team's buildup of goals. And I think right now Leicester have like four or even five attacking options uh, where I think where they can consistently kind of build and get goals from. And I think there's a similar situation in West Ham there, which makes me kind of scared to kind of pick those players until they really hit that kind of hot peak of form, uh, such as, you know, what Lingard hit last season. Same with Gundogan as well for Man City uh, as well. Now, as I mentioned, the 6.5 picks are, I think, fantastic this year for the midfield. I think you have someone like Saka, you have someone like Buendia, and you have someone like Rafinha as well from Leeds. And these are all three top players, I think, uh, playing, you know, either out wide in winger positions or potentially even uh, set to, to move, you know, into a 10 position like Emi Buendia. And I think what's great about these players is they're very technical. They can they can bring you a lot of assists. They can also um, provide a lot on the team in terms of just their directness, in terms of their ability to shoot at times. I think Saka a little bit less so than uh, Rafinha and Buendia so far. But I think, you know, Saka, as we know, is, is a player that only has potential, I think, to grow and he's very raw in that sense, but he, he brings in a lot of directness that I think, uh, especially if the Arsenal squad is uh, to be improved on, this transfer window can make him very, very interesting. The rest of the picks, I think, at 6.5, I'm not too much of a fan of. I think a lot of people have been looking at Dele Alli's price, and they're somewhat enamored by it, but I, I'm not so right now, just due to the fact that Tottenham don't have a manager. Uh, I know he played quite a fair bit under Ryan Mason, but you know I still... I'm tempted to think, say that the, the other three 6.5 picks are better. Um, Bowen, as I mentioned, similar to the West Ham situation, is kind of competing with, I think, players like Fornals. Uh, Lingard, even if he returns uh, for goals and potentially even, you know, a center forward as well. And West Ham are right now playing in a very kind of creative structure, I think, structurally uh, up top. Um, and they have like four people who kind of alternate the positions, even though that Lanzini is an example, and Yarmolenko coming back too where you don't really know how much people can play. You know, people aren't glued on for 90 minutes. Uh, there isn't going to be a set pen taker unless Antonio's on the field. And those things are kind of tricky for me to kind of um, debate with when they're more glued on and nailed on picks for me. But moving on, I think, you know, midfielders, you want to really have good midfielders in your team. Emil Smith-Rowe is probably, once again, the only cheap option that I think I would ever consider at 5.5. 5. Um, other midfielders don't really... Uh, scream anything out to me in my opinion and I think for that reason you, you you have to make sure that you have a strong midfield people might even suggest that Dallas could be quite a good pick given the fact that he actually had a lot of great attacking returns even without clean sheets but fundamentally I think you know you want to stick with uh, more top tier picks uh, at, at least around the 6.5 range because you can afford to cut down on prices with the availability of budget defenders this year and the fact that you can probably go for 8.5 million with a cent for get keeper. Now, last but not least, we look at forwards. I mentioned quite earlier that um, the forwards are probably the more overpriced assets in the game, and I think we can see that with the kind of price rises in Bamford and Calvert Lewin, which to be fair are actually deserved. And same with Kane, who had you know a tremendous attacking output last season. First of all, Kane's I think position is very contentious. His prices. Price rise also means that it's very hard to fit, you know, Salah Fernandez and Kane once again, like we did last year. Uh, we're likely probably going to be spending money on, I would say, more mid-tier strikers, in my opinion, and playing maybe two strikers uh, with a clear kind of fodder striker, like someone like Obafemi at 4.5 or any other 4.5 option, really. Uh, what I do like um, outside of these kind of top premium picks um, and also, I'd like to mention how overpriced some assets are. I think Werner's overpriced, Firmino's overpriced, Aubameyang is, is, I think, considerably overpriced as well. Uh, Lacazette had a good season, mind you, but you know, I'm not really sure even if he's a, he's a priority for Arsenal to keep right now. Um, and I think w- the same can be said about Marshall, who'd have, who had a non-existent season, really. Um, I, I do like Watkins at his price. I think if they keep Grealish, he becomes a super option. I mean... 
the attack is still very much funneled through him, um, despite the fact that the creative chances are going to be built by Grealish and Buendia, but Watkins f finds a way to kind of get onto every single sort of action, I think, uh, with Aston Villa, whether it's just him kind of score a pass, like getting assists in, in games. And I think this year will be another chance for him to continue developing as a player. And I, I think he has a lot of assets that will make him a fantastic striker. So for me, he's a great pick at 7.5 and he has a great supporting cast. Um, so something similar can be, I think, said for Tony, who at a 6.5 price is worth that kind of punt at the start of the season. Uh, we obviously haven't seen Brentford play in the Premier League yet, but, you know, as I mentioned before, in the last few years, um, the championship players have really, really um, shown, especially the strikers, in my opinion. Uh, we've seen players continue to develop year on year as well, such as Trey Adams last year, who I think had a much stronger season than many people anticipated. And for that reason, I think he's now suddenly turned into a player that who's overpriced. But I think at 6.5, Tony and also Abraham are very interesting picks. Uh, you might even think about Rodrigo, who, who is someone who kind of plays as a 10 for, for Leeds at times. And I think uh, those three picks are interesting and, and you want to have a 6.5 striker uh, given the kind of budget flexibility that it gives you. Abraham moving to a mid-table club in the Premier League would be a super kind of um, move and, and for your team would be a wonderful asset in my opinion. So I really like those three players and... As I mentioned, I don't think there's any picks, you know, in between the, the full-on Florida range and 6.5, so I'm not really going to talk about that. But that's my initial thoughts on the Premier League. There's undoubtedly going to be managerial changes, uh, player changes as well, even tactical changes as a result of them. And, you know, I'll think more about these players and, and what kind of other opportunities we have. But, you know, a preliminary team right now that I have is something like this. Uh, I have, you know, Sanchez and Foster, as mentioned, White, who could move into Arsenal, uh, Fofana and Digne and, and Soufal and Alexander-Arnold. So these are kind of uh, my two standard centre-backs, I think, where they're kind of budget options for me that kind of p could give me a clean sheet uh, week on week for, for a relatively low price. And then these are the three full-backs that I think can provide solid att attacking returns for me. Uh, in, in Saka, Havertz and Rafinha, I've picked players, in my opinion, who are due for another step up, I think, in terms of their seasons. And uh, I could replace potentially Saka with someone else, such as Buendia, um, or even, you know, uh, another 6.5 option that that might interest me more if, if Arsenal, for example, don't get those kind of transfer changes that I would like to see. Uh, for example, I'd like to see a better fullback uh, on the right-hand side for Arsenal to see if, you know, Saka makes sense. But for, for now, he's kind of a placeholder. He can be replaced with the other 6.5 minutes that we talked about. And Salah and Fernandez, I think, for most people, are going to be nailed on. Uh, Watkins and Tony, I've already explained. I think they're the common, I think, dual striker pick that most people will, will go for this season. So if you want a differential, as I mentioned, look out for the other kind of 6.5 million picks that I mentioned um, in, in Abraham uh, as, as a potential option if he moves on. And, I mean, even potentially, like, if you don't want to have a pure fodder option, I think... At a 5.0 price, perhaps Isaac's success could be interesting. He he um, was recovering from an Achilles tendon rupture last year, but you know I think he has the potential to have a good season. And, and for me, when he was back in the Premier League, he was a player that was slowly developing and getting better, so he could be interesting too. But that's it for now. Those are my initial thoughts on Game Week 1 in Fantasy uh, in terms of what, what players might be interesting, what prices are overpriced or underpriced. Uh, let me know what you think about... Uh, your team selection and, and what kind of things you'd like me to consider in the next video uh, as we as we kind of edge closer to the season.